within the Indian culture, there is a level of anti-blackness and it's not okay. Welcome back to another video. My name is Roshni and this channel is called Betty Grew Up where I talk about personal growth, self-care, and self-worth. I wanted to dig into this a little bit deeper and see, you know, where the idea of colorism really came from. And in my mind, you know, a lot of it went back to British colonization of India. It actually started before then. India has had a long history of being conquered by light skin pressers. So it started with the Aryans in 1000 BCE. They were then conquered by the Persians. They were then conquered by the Mughals. They were then conquered by the British. And so through all those patterns, Indians essentially developed the idea that light, lighter skin was better, light skin meant pure, light skin meant power. Even with the caste system within India itself, lighter skin people generally tended to be wealthier and to be of a higher caste because they were generally inside, they didn't have to labor, while people of lower caste had to were most likely physical laborers and thus had to spend a lot of time outside, which then led to them having a darker skin tone over time. In 1978, the first um, Indian skin lightening cream came out. Since then, you know, Bollywood has been filled with light-skinned actors and actresses. So there's a lot of red flags and a lot of things that point to colorism. And, you know, I'm sure every Indian person watching this, myself included, can uh, relate to being told that, you know, you're too dark or that you should stay out of the sun. Um, even with arranged marriages, a big thing that a lot of families are looking for is someone that is fair-skinned to marry into their family. With an understanding colorism, you know, when it did come to uh, the British colonial reign, of India, a lot of Europeans would tell Indians that light skin meant that they had better morality and that they were more intelligent. This is also a tactic of divide and conquer that colonizers use. They promise this sense of whiteness or this superior role to a group of minorities so that they then betray another group of minorities instead of come together. They stay divided and that makes everything easier for the colonizer. And so a lot of the reason that, you know, Europeans said this was also to justify the torture of African slaves. Because of that justification of treating black slaves worse, Indians began to kind of come around to this idea and they believed that, well, if they could have lighter skin and if they could be educated and if they could have this certain set of morals that the Europeans told them were the right type of morals to have, then they could essentially achieve whiteness within their own uh, society. Not only did that lead to anti-blackness within the Indian culture, but it also led to internal racism. Racial equity tools actually um, gave this great definition of what internalized racism is. Internalized racism is a system in itself that causes people of color to see the world in terms of victim slash perpetrator and leads to power clashes within a culture based on nationality, class, etc. So there's a few ways in which internalized racism will actually affect your day-to-day -day life. They said that internalized racism also in affects individuals because it creates a sense of inferiority to other human beings and it grounds the person who is experiencing it in victimhood. It also overwhelms that person and causes them to be drained by the emotions that they need to navigate life. They also are unable to rest because they're always reading and trying to educate and change white people and that leads to a lack of self-care and self-development. I and mean, I found all of this so interesting when I was reading through it because this is exactly how I felt, right? I had such a victim mentality and I saw myself in a me versus the world kind of way and especially being, you know, in a PWI and being around, you know, extremely wealthy white individuals for the majority of my life, that really made me feel like I was other in so many ways, you know, not just by the color of my skin, but my socioeconomic status and, you know, the, the type of life that I lived and the type of opportunities and experiences that I had were nothing in comparison to what a lot of the people around me um, had, had lived through and been through in terms of, um, just like privilege. And so it really forced me to constantly feel drained. It really forced me to not ever feel like I could belong in the group of people that I was around. Like this says, I never really was into self-care in these years of my life because my focus was on, you know, wearing the weight of the world on my shoulders. My focus was on changing the world and it wasn't on, you know, what I could do to be better or to feel better or what I could do to prevent myself from burning out. Talking about this, I actually wanted to point out this quote by Audrey Lord, caring for myself is not self-indulgence, it is self-preservation, and that is an act of political warfare. 
Angela Davis also said, self-care and healing and attention to the body and the spiritual dimension, all of this is now a part of radical social justice struggles. And so these quotes really show how important it is for, especially as, um, black feminist icons, how important it is for them to prioritize their own self-care. And this really is a, a political act, right? Because in a world where they don't want you to survive, they don't want women to survive, they don't want black people to survive. So in a world like that, you it is a, a major political statement to take care of yourself and to say, hey, today, I'm not wearing the weight of the world on my shoulders. Today, I get to take care of myself. Today, I get to rest. And that is so, so important, especially for, you know, Black Americans that have been on the front line of this movement for years. And not just the Black Lives Matter movement, you know, for the, the majority of this decade, but for everything they have endured, everything that the American country has put them through has been absolutely abhorrent. And so to to make them be at the front line fighting for their lives again and again, it's not okay. And we need to step in and not not take away from their voices or anything like that, but we just need to be there as other resources, as other people that will say, I'm here for you, your life does matter. We are here in this together. And if you need to rest, I'm gonna be here fighting for you because you deserve this. And we have put you through so much. And we as Asian Americans also have to admit that we have played a role in that. And with George Floyd's death, there was an Asian American cop standing right next to it. And no, he wasn't the one with his knee on his neck, but he was there and he allowed everything to happen. And from what I've heard, it was also an Arabic American who called the cops on George Floyd in the first place. And so this is not okay. This is our problem as well. And we need to seriously change within our own community. We need to repair and, you know, call out any level of anti-blackness that we see, any level of even colorism towards our own people is a start. We're not benefiting from the system as it is, and we cannot keep lying to ourselves and saying, oh, well, you know, if we just act white enough, if we just do everything that they want from us, we can't keep kidding ourselves into thinking that that's gonna give us this role of whiteness in our society. We're doing all this for this abstract, amorphous idea that doesn't even exist and hasn't been proven to us as something that's ever going to work, you know? So we need to really let go of that and unlearn so much of that internalized racism and unlearn so much of that model minority myth that we've been taught and allow ourselves to be individuals, but also to stand together regardless of sexuality and race and nationality and to actually fight for what we all deserve and what we need the future of America to be. All right, everyone. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. My next video is going to be all about diving into what anti-racism actually is and what it looks like. So thank you so much for watching. Happy healing.